Hey everyone, we're going to talk today about something that has been plaguing our industry for the longest time, the floating people pictures. That's right. This is, I see this all the time. You know, you've done it. I know I've done it. We're going to talk about ways that we can make this look a little bit better. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back. Now, if you haven't checked out my website already, make sure you go check out my website, which is learningdojo.ninja. You can check out my blog where I have all my different posts. You can also check out templates and download Storyline templates. You can check out courses like Storyline 360, Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Rise, Custom Squirm, HTML5 video, and so forth. Today we're going to be talking specifically about people pictures and making this look a little bit better inside of your storyline interaction. Now, it doesn't take much to do. There's just a few things that I can do inside of storyline that will make this at least look a little bit better and you don't have those people just kind of floating in the air not touching anything. That's what really drives me nuts. Now, again, I've done it. I know you've done it. Uh, so we're just going to talk about ways that we can improve it. So I'm inside of Storyline right now, and I have this page pulled up. What I'm going to do here, you see that it's just a blank white page. I want to add some color to this. And especially with the text and especially in the bottom, I want to give this person somewhere to stand because right now she she's not really standing anywhere. Now, I could move her to the bottom here at the very bottom, but that looks a little bit different because her feet aren't exactly flat there. Let me move this back here. I'm going to insert a shape. In fact, I'm, before I even do that, let me go ahead and go into the design and I'm going to go into the background styles and then go into format background. Now in the format background, we're going to pick a solid fill that will allow me to just select a solid color on the background there. I'm going to select this drop down box here and then go into more colors and let's go ahead and select kind of a darker brown here. I just want to get it really dark and then click OK. And you can see in the background, before I even close here, you can see that it's actually added that nice little background there. I may want to do a different color. You don't have to do that color, but for now, let's go ahead and stick with that. We have one problem, though. Our text is now kind of faded into the background. Because it's black and the background is now kind of a darker color, we need to go ahead and make sure that this pops and is more readable. So I select the text box and make sure that you select the text box around the text box and not inside of the text box. I see that a lot with new students as well, is they'll select the text box and try to move it or inside the text box and try to move it. So select outside the text box and then come into the home tab and let's go ahead and select this drop down box to a white color. So now we have a white color on a brown background. This looks a little bit better, but the person is still floating. So we need to give her some floor, somewhere to stand on. And so I'm gonna come in here and go into inserts, and then I'm gonna go into shape, and then let's add like a little floor down at the bottom. So this is going to extend out, not the entire width, but it's gonna extend out most of the width there. And so I'm gonna, I may have to adjust this a little bit once we get into changing the colors and so forth. But I'm gonna go into format here, and I'm going to go into Shape Fill, and we're going to come into More Fill Options. Now, we want to make sure that this initially is the same color as the background. So I can use this Pick Color, this little color picker here, and then go ahead and select the same background there, and then select OK. We have a problem, though, is that it's kind of blending into the background. Now, I might actually even have to change this color one more time because we're going to make this look or pop a little bit different. And you can use whatever color you want. Just keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to get rid of the outline as well. You notice this outline. It goes around the entire square. We can only really see the top part. But I'm going to get rid of the outline. In fact, I don't like outlines inside of Storyline. For some reason, they've I just get rid of them. I, I've never been able to work with them good. But now let's go ahead and go into shape fill here. And in fact, we're going to expand out this area right here. And instead of a solid color, let's go ahead and select gradient fill. And this is what I was talking about. We're going to have to change that color back to the brown here in a second. With a gradient color, you have a couple different stops. You have a stop one, stop two, stop three. Now, if I select those different stops, you can see that 
where the start position is. And if I select that start position, it starts to adjust the gradient. I'm gonna make it simple and just work with two stops. So let's get rid of the second one here. And now we only have the first stop and we have the second stop right there. That is looking great. So let's go ahead and go into the first stop, which is basically on top there. Actually, let's go into the stop two because I wanna make sure that this same background right here is the same color down at the bottom. I do see one problem as I'm working with this, and as you're working with this, you may see problems that kind of pop up. Notice that her pants, and I didn't notice this before, but notice that her pants are brown. And so that may make this look a little bit awkward. So in fact, I'm gonna close this out. We're gonna go back into our design tab, go into the background styles here and click on format background, and we're gonna pick a different color. Let's go ahead and pick like a gray there. And that way her pants don't blend into the background so much like they were before. And that's great. So let's go ahead and hit close. Go back into this shape. I'm going to go into format. I'm going to click on this expand button. And then let's go to stop two, which is the bottom color right now. And let's match the same color that's on top here. So I'm going to select this drop down box and then select eyedropper and then select that color there. That way it kind of matches, but we want the top to be a little bit darker. So we want it to be the same color, but slightly darker. And that way it kind of creates this like a 3D effect, like it's there's a background and then it ends and then there's a floor. So that's our, that's our goal. We want to have like it looking like there's a floor there. So I'm going to come into stop number one, and then I'm going to select the eyedropper again, and I'm going to select this color right here. Now it's going to look like it's all the same color at this point, and that's fine. But if I select this drop down box and then click on more colors, I can use this little slider and you can slide up to be a little bit lighter or you can slide down to be a little bit darker. I'm gonna slide down because I want it to be a little bit darker so I get the contrast between that background color and then the floor as well, like it's a, like it's a shadow essentially is what I'm going for. I'm gonna click okay there and then click on close. Now, one other problem that I have, this is in front of her, so I need to move it to the back, and I can do that with my timeline down at the bottom. Just move her or that's option down below. Now, notice that, just simple little change there. I've been able to give her a floor where she can stand on. She's no longer floating here. Now, I may wanna modify this a little bit so I can make this a little bit smaller, but that's one way that you can make it so these people pictures don't float in the middle of nowhere there. One more thing I wanted to talk about that I see often as well, which is the floating half person. So this is really a thing, I've seen this a lot, but you have the person cut off from anything. Now what I like to do here is go ahead and I'm gonna hold down the shift button so we keep her proportional, but I'm gonna make her actually, the, the bottom half of her, whatever's cut off right there, make that touch the bottom. So that way she's not floating. We have to do some adjustments here. So I'm gonna move her over and I'm gonna move the question text over here as well. I don't need as much room for the question itself, but let's just move that over and let's move this down a little bit as well here. Now I'm gonna move the question text down as well. And I wanna make the question text pop out a little bit more and to do that, it really is pretty simple. I come into the shape and I go ahead and just add a shape here and get rid of the outline color. Again, I, I hate the outline, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the outline. And then I'm gonna come in and select kind of this gray background and move that all the way down to the bottom. Now I'll do the same thing that I did with the other text and go ahead and change that to a white color. And so that way that pops out. But I also in my questions like to have little words pop out just for design. So I'm gonna just take Superman here and I'm gonna bold that. So you can see just by that, it's added a little bit more styled with that bold here. In fact, I need to move this over a little bit more so it's not right up against her there. There we go. One more thing that I wanna do is I wanna add, let me make sure that this is inside of the stage here, but I wanna add a little drop shadow on her in order for her to pop out from the background. Now, don't overdo drop shadows. I see, I've seen a lot of people overdo drop shadows here, but we wanna have just a slight drop shadow. So I'm gonna come into the character here. I'm gonna come into the format here. I'm gonna go into picture effects, and then I'm going to select kind of this off top center here. Now to change the shadow, I click on this format, go into shadow here, and then I'm gonna up the transparency to be 
80, around 80 there. The size right there is fine. So the distance, I can change the distance if I wanted to. And you can see that it will expand out a little bit. Again, we just want it to be slightly away from the background. I mean, even that looks a whole lot better right now. We've been able to take these people pictures. We've been able to give that person a floor. We've also been able to uh, adjust the question, which is some simple modifications. And now it looks a whole lot better. So these are just a couple different ways that I've used in order to fix the problem of floating people pictures. And I hope again, you check out my website, learningdojo.ninja, check out my blog, my templates. I have Storyline game templates as well. And then also my courses on Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Rise, and so forth. And if you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and make sure that you uh, check back often so you can see future updates about Storyline, XAPI, uh, Captivates, and other e-learning authoring tools. But thanks, everyone.